I'm Emily Pozzi with the American Planning Association, and I'm joined today by Ben Frost. Ben is a member of APA's Legislative and Policy Committee, and he's also the Director of Legal and Public Affairs for New Hampshire Housing. Ben, it's great to have you here today. Thank you. So I want to start off with a question about um, President Trump's recent uh, skinny budget for the FY 2018 fiscal year. Um, he's proposed the wholesale elimination of CDBG, Community Development Block Grants, and the Home Investment Partnership Program, or HOME. Um, I know in, in your community you do a lot of work with HOME. Tell me a little bit about that and what that would mean for the families of your community. Well, New Hampshire Housing is the State Housing Finance Agency, and we're the recipient of the statewide allocation, so we receive a state minimum of $3 million of, of home funding every year, uh, which we use uh, exclusively to finance low-income housing rental um, uh, construction. So we don't, we don't own uh, uh, the, the buildings that we finance, uh, but we use it use home primarily as a as gap filler. Mm -hmm. So when we're presented with a deal that is using, say, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, which is the bulk of the financing for a project, um, and it doesn't quite have enough uh, capital in it, uh, we use home to fill those gaps. And so home is, is really a vital resource in helping deals come to fruition that would not otherwise get built. And so those deals are, uh, are built so that uh, people living in our state uh, who are of low income, whether they're disabled or elderly or uh, are simply working in low-income jobs, have a place to live. So home really makes this stuff happen. Can you think of any specific stories um, in New Hampshire that come to mind when you think of home and how it's helped fill that stop gap funding? Sure. Well, in, in New Hampshire, we have a lot of um, existing old structures, mm -hmm. uh, old mill buildings, you know, recognize that New Hampshire was the textile capital of the world in the 19th century. A lot of those buildings have been waiting for, for future uses. So we have specialized in working with developers to rehabilitate those structures and turn them into uh, rental housing. Mm -hmm. And home has been a really critical resource for that. So, for example, in our, our north country uh, city of Berlin, uh, there was an old high school. The, it was a Notre Dame high school. It was um, uh, one of these derelict buildings that had plywood on the sides of the buildings. And it was a big structure in the center of town. Uh, so home, along with other resources, was used to rehabilitate that and create elderly housing, uh, which was a really a much needed resource in Berlin, which is a, a fairly uh, low income community. Down the south end of, our, of the state, in the city of Nashua, there was this beautiful old uh, mill building called the Cotton Mill mm -hmm. that a private developer had his eyes on. He tried to make it work several different ways, but then found that he could do a mixed market rate and low income housing a development using the tax credit, using CDBG, and using the Home Investment Partnership yeah. Program. And without that, those things wouldn't have happened. They would not have happened. Well, so you're, you're very lucky. In, in New Hampshire, you enjoy um, having two senators, Senators Shaheen and Hassan, um, who are supportive of, very supportive of these programs, and, and have actually criticized in, in recent weeks um, President Trump's um, proposal to cut these programs completely. I guess, what sort of advice do you have um, for planners who are from congressional districts or states who don't enjoy that kind of um, support of these vital community development block, pro block programs? Well, it's true. We, we're really lucky to have uh, such strong support in uh, our entire congressional delegation for the programs that we administer in New Hampshire dealing with, with housing for uh, low-income people. Um, and uh, Senators uh, Shaheen and Hassan have been really powerful advocates for us, both in their roles as state legislators, because they were both governors before they became senators, and now in the U.S. Senate. Um, what we have found, though, is that it's really important to get the members of Congress out, when, when they're back in state, when they're back in the district, uh, to get them out to sites to both see what uh, the federal money is being used to do but also to meet with their constituents who are the direct beneficiaries of this funding. Mm -hmm. So this is what the taxpayer dollars are going to do to help these people who really need a decent place to live. Beyond that, I think it's really important to develop a good and positive relationship with the congressional staff. So uh, each member of Congress has staff that's both in, in D.C. and in state. And you really need to uh, work with them, develop a personal relationship with them, and so that when, when you have a, an ask of your member of Congress, 
you're talking with a staff member who will then communicate that, that ask in a positive tone to the member. Sounds like fantastic advice for our many planning advocates out there. Ben, thank you so much for today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. For more information about getting involved in advocacy with the American Planning Association, visit planning.org backslash policy. I'm Emily Pazzi with APA. Thank you.